camera is on. Welcome to Nights at the Round Table, a round table discussion on speculative fiction books and film. Hi everybody, welcome to the next episode of Nights at the Round Table. Uh, today we are discussing the 2012 question mark film. 12, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was 2012, sure. upside down. Uh, I'm sitting here with Eric and Marshallin, and we're going to start with general impressions of the film. Marshallin, since you're new, you get to go first. Yay! Yay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Starts off well. Yeah. I went into the movie like I had not seen, I had no idea what it was. It just I saw the picture in the description and I figured, oh yeah, maybe I'll enjoy that. I'll try it. So I went in blind. I expected pretty people in a visually interesting setting and a weak story, and I got even less than that. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, burn. <laughs> not that I disagree with you, but burn. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, Eric. Uh, I'm gonna butcher Shakespeare. It, it, it's a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> really? That was not obvious. <laughs> it was visually beautiful. Yes. That's this... all I've got to say about this film. It was it was visually beautiful. Oh, good. I can rant then. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. I have an hour's worth of ranting to do <laughs> in this movie. The movie's special effects, except for a few little places, were gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The sets, beautiful. The, the landscapes, wonderful. Even some of the visuals, like him eating the pomegranate and it flying up, just absolutely stunning. Everything else was terrible! <laughs> I've seen some people say the acting was good. Other than Wormtail, the acting sucked! Other than Wormtail, Okay, let's start. If you're going to start your movie with a fairy tale style beginning, and you're going to name three rules, stick to them! Yeah, that yeah. really bothered me. Second of all, if you're going to establish... A rule? Stick to it! Can I say it the third time? I mean, Stick to your rules! <laughs> I went into this expecting science fantasy. So fake science that is basically magic. But in every magic system you need consistency. Yeah. They say matter at the beginning. After 40 seconds, it's pretty clear that they mean metal or something else that is called matter. Because... He eats pomegranates from the other world. That's and I didn't matter. see his stomach exploding. Yeah. Um, other cases, there's the drink upside down. and Which was a cool visual. It but absolutely visual. beautiful. It's it basically, cool. from what I read, the director got the idea for this movie, writer-director, from a dream. Which is great. Dreams are visually beautiful. But they can be. Yeah, they can be. They can also be horrible or very bland. Mm-hmm. Or interrupted by screaming babies. <laughs> anyway. Alright. Uh, oh, man. So much wrong with this movie. <laughs> the magic red stuff is explained as bees eating flowers from both worlds. From both worlds. Bees don't eat flowers. They eat pollen. Second of all, why is he getting bees on top of a frozen mountain? Bees I fall <laughs> asleep. Unless they're burning, but then they established food doesn't affect them. There's other things that really piss me off. Um, when he's going on his dates, he does this big thing about having the matter from the upside. Let's not go into calling up and down when gravity is reversed. If anyone has been from Northern Ontario or Southern Ontario or from Quebec, if you've ever met someone who is south of you or north of you, they'll say going up when they mean south or north, everyone has different definitions. The down would say up, and the up would say down. No, other way. You know what I mean. Up <laughs> is it to one person would be up. Yeah, the, Why down, would... the, the people who call themselves down, yeah. when they're looking up, they're looking up. But the people from the up, up looking at them would be looking up for them. Down. I yeah. know it was supposed to be a socioeconomic uh, 
metaphor for our worlds, upper class and lower class, but that's not fun. And <laughs> the bars yeah, of it was all right. metal that he uses to keep himself anchored burn. Now, I'll get into bad energy later. The bars burn on him when he's on the world the bars are from. Why are the bars burning when they're in their own world? Well, yeah, when the rule was that they only burn if they're in the other world. If they're in contact with other matter. Yeah. But he gets a shirt from that world. And he gets a vest made from that world. So he should not be burning. Second of all, shouldn't that big box of stuff that the the guy from above gave him be burning under his desk? It had little metal bits. You cannot make magnetic cards without metal bits. Okay. <laughs> now that's off my chest. One, one last big rant. <laughs> one of the biggest things that they, the movie talks about is exploitation of oil. So they're taking the oil from uh, down below and pulling it up above, refining it, and then selling it back as energy to down below. The oil is literally raining on them from underneath the pumps because who cares about safety because, you know, these people are stupid. So they can't afford the energy. So what they do is they get matter from up above and use it like coal because it spontaneously combusts. Here's my problem with that. It's raining oil. <laughs> it's raining oil. They have fridges to keep this material in, which need energy. But they're using it like coal in a little heater. Third, if you have energy that spontaneously combusts, you have unlimited energy. <laughs> you literally throw that shit into a boiler, and that's how a nuclear power plant works. He was doing... Detailed chemistry with pink bees. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yet he couldn't figure out how to create a boiler from this fantastic energy? Like, down below? Okay, and then, if everyone is using it for coal, how can it be the rarest and most expensive material on that world? They're fined for having it, but everyone uses it. One woman brings a screw to pay off her entire debt. And yet, that's what he uses in one night to keep himself warm. So, physics, economics, magic. Shall we go on with the love story? You're more um. of an expert on this one. <laughs> uh, well, the love story didn't upset me as much as any of this science and economic stuff upset you, clearly. You had stuff to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was just... Bland. Bland. Mm. And it, there was no point. Like, it was just like... And it was part of, I guess it was part of the socioeconomic thing too. Like everybody was against, like, you cannot go to the other world and you have to keep them apart. And like they burn people's houses down and throw them in prison or whatever for mixing with the other world. And no one ever explains why. Yeah. No. That would have been a really fascinating movie is how these two worlds became, one became so dominant, one became so subordinate. I... Like, was there like a, a battle that was forced, fought and lost? I would watch the frack out of that i'd also like to know how two genetically compatible races manage to grow up on opposite sides mm -hmm. and look identical mm. with the same spectrum of colors heights races britishness you know <laughs> um i mean you can go into fa fan theory type situations with spoiler at the ending the girl from above gets pregnant and can travel to either world. Oh, God, that really... Oh, Jess. That, that oh, could, my God. <laughs> could indicate that their species actually evolved on one planet and then yeah. spread to the other one. Sure. And that semen and is magical. And pregnancy just magically makes you be able to not be upside down in one of those worlds. Never mind that it completely fixes everything that was wrong with the world, too. Oh, like, jeez. I just... Oh, yeah. Perfect. But... Yeah, no. Uh, All, both worlds are perfectly wealthy the and ending everyone is wanted happy at the me, I, I almost threw my remote. I was just. The ending was I so. I love happy endings. They are my favorite thing in the world. This wasn't a happy ending. This was cheap. This was. Happy endings have to make sense. They yeah, have to be yeah. earned. They have to be earned. They have to have make sense. And they have to serve a purpose. This was just. 
Look, something sad. Look, something happy. Hooray! It felt... The ending. Un... Unimportant and uninteresting and a little obsessive. Uh-huh. What, what, what is it with filmmakers and writers and turning every love story into some kind of fetishized obsession? Oh, I saw a blonde girl above me. I must worship her until I die. Ten years did he spend in jail? Was he suddenly Scottish? What? I don't know. <laughs> My accent's travel. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's counting my accents. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is no reason for him to be obsessed with her for ten years. I'm assuming he did wow. some jail time or, or something. something. Yeah. Why? Why is he obsessed? Well, didn't he was... spend those ten years thinking she was dead? Yes. So why is he so, like, <gasps> she's on TV. I must now change everything in my life to become with her because... That's possible. Well, I mean, it's it's a Romeo and Juliet Fine. story. Right? And that was stupid then. Yes, it was stupid. But I don't know. People eat this stuff up. Don't ask me why. I'm uh, the no, wrong person to ask about why. Give <laughs> me Jane Austen. Not uh, Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Uh-huh. Give, give me a, an author who knows how to make fun of love at the same time. Irony. Humor. Sarcasm. <laughs> okay. So, other plot holes that really bug me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they make a huge point in the movie. Say it at three times that they weigh all the employees from down under as they go in. Down under? <laughs> yes. From down below. <laughs> yeah. As, okay, no, fine. As, fine, whatever. Yeah, as they all, go in. Yep, so cold. that they can be weighed on the way out to make sure they don't steal any matter. Yeah. Twice, he returns to his side... Without going through his building. He I, should have been fired the first time when he jumped out of the river into the river. And then he shows up the next day. Hey, you didn't log out yesterday. Well, mm-hmm. I'm obviously here. Oh my god, you must be a thief! Like, Yeah. That, I, that was literally the least grievous thing about this movie. Yeah, the, the thing that bugged me about that scene is that his shoe's on fire at that point. Like, actually on fire when he jumps into the river and stuff. Rumper doesn't next... burn that easily, but he had clothing on. Yeah, but his that's... underwear should have been on fire. Yeah, and that even would have been more entertaining. Beyond, <laughs> yeah, beyond that, like the thing that I stuck onto is that afterward in his in his apartment, he's walking around barefoot. His feet are completely fine. He's not showing any sign of pain when his feet, his rubber shoes were literally on fire. For those who have never had rubber melt on you, it coats you and then burns you like crazy. And then when you peel it off, it takes your flesh with it. Yeah. Mm, bacon. <laughs> Everybody loves long pork. <laughs> so I I like love stories. This wasn't a love story. It was some sort of weird... We like each other, so we have to be together. And there are so many hints at there, or maybe this was my hopefulness, that there might be a twist. But there was no twist. Or oh, I mean, the guy up above bought the patent before the big company, so yay, also, the anti-aging cream is going to go to everyone and they're going to be rich. Also, pregnancy is magic. Pregnancy is magic. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I don't um, like love stories, generally speaking. I like love stories if they're part of something bigger than just the love story, but when it's a focus on the love story, I just, I get so sick. If it's done really well, then fine. I can handle it. But otherwise, I just get bored. Like, really stupidly bored with it. Give me something else, (laughs) please. (laughs) Some other conflict would be nice. Yeah, and they kept bringing up conflicts, and I think that's the most frustrating part about this movie, is that it had so much potential. Mm -hmm. There was big corporation controlling a whole city. There was government collusion. There was his aunt who was some sort of witch from the past. And there was him as this mad inventor. And there was her... Okay, no, I'm sorry. She was was cast as Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. (laughs) She She is an actress who is capable of acting. Unless a director doesn't understand that, which he didn't. I mean, honestly, he could have been just as obsessed with the lamp. It wouldn't have made that much difference. The lamp might have remembered him. <laughs> and would have been brighter! Oh, oh no! Eric, no! <laughs> Bad Eric! <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. So, I, I mean, you 
right. This movie had a lot of potential. And the pink powder. He could have used that to travel to the other world. Right? I'm why, like, why don't you just... Throughout the whole thing, the I'm like, why aren't you figuring out a way of using that so you can go to the other world? Or she can come to yours. Like, seriously, just make it like an energy drink. Like... No, instead, we're going to make anti-aging cream. That's not how the human face works. <laughs> you know what happens if you have jowls that float? They float upwards. They don't get tighter. <laughs> 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 this movie. <laughs> was there anything you really liked about this movie, or liked at all about this movie? There were a lot of really pretty visuals. I think if you yeah, could take oh. the like the best hundred seconds or so of the movie, the most prettiest, and cut them in an interesting way, you'd have an amazing Chanel Number no. Five commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The visuals in this movie were absolutely absolutely stunning. gorgeous, well filmed. Yeah. Well, and considering the sh- small-ish bit budget of fifty million, I started out with a small loan of fifty. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really well done. Yeah, it was gorgeous. And the music was pretty good. The music was. It was a, I, a lot I of nice rock music, music yeah. and some guitar. And I enjoyed the music. I enjoyed the visuals. That's it. You know, I could have forgiven this movie being bland storyline, meh acting, if it didn't have so many cool fantasy aspects to it that were never used. Yeah, that's true. They didn't really and the explore it properly. Pregnancy as a fix all? Right, that pissed me off so much. What what so are they like much. his DNA took advantage, so now she's walking around with a belly that's going up? <laughs> And I somehow mean, that makes her float? I mean, it would help with the back problems? I don't know. <laughs> I just Can you imagine lying down how painful that would be? <laughs> <laughs> she had... Tw- it's like, I'm pregnant with twins. And you're like, why? Why do you have to add twins to this? Uh, you know, what is this, a Star Wars prequel? And not only that, <laughs> it's just at the end when everything's a happy ending, uh, oh. they... The narration is it changed everything, and then they show this gorgeous utopia. I'm like, how, how that happened would have been a way more interesting movie than this. Mm-hmm. Show me that. That would have been really cool. But Th- this was the C storyline in an epic fantasy along the lines of um, oh, Harrison Ford. Uh, that's actually science fiction. Electric Sheep. Um, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> the C like, storyline. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, look, they're cute. Okay, let's go on to the interesting people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. This, yeah, as a C storyline, this was fantastic. It was, it was part of an anthology of things that happened in this world. I'd be okay with that. As a short just, film, uh, it would have been really interesting because it's just there to show the visuals. Yeah. Yeah. As a tech demo. <laughs> just. <laughs> Ah, oh, there is so much wasted potential. And what annoys me is it started out as a fairy tale, then moved into a romantic drama, then finished as a, a, a utopia story. And I just pick a lane, Road Warrior, like Jesus Christ. If, if you're going to start out as a fairy tale, make it a fairy tale all the way through. It just... I think the fairy tale thing was just a way to dump those rules and like explain this which is how the universe works which they didn't follow, follow. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> just, uh, I believe why? CinemaSins would say minus 10 points for narration yeah I know narration ding <laughs> just oh uh, there was so much wasted potential and it's such a beautiful film it really is just gorgeous to look at but everything else was just so lame yeah. Yep. I'm very disappointed because of how good this could have been. Mm. That's it. It could have been really good. Is there anything that you really liked about the film other than the visuals? Not really, I've no. got to say. I mean, the story was very bland. The world was not well built. There was no motive or explanation behind anything that was happening. It was just like spoon feeding the most basic storyline to the viewer and it was like although i did kind of like that point where the big corporation suddenly becomes a 1930s uh mobster movie yeah. <laughs> yes 
Hey, boy, come into my car. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't yeah, yeah, no, that. That's I'm also bad. really tired of these kind of love <laughs> I'm stories. Sorry for interrupting you. No. She <laughs> <laughs> of these kind of love stories, it's always the lower class guy falling in love with an upper class woman. Can we have it the other way around once in a fucking while, please? How about we just have, like, a upper class woman, lower class woman, or I don't know, gender neutral, or I don't know anything but the tired trope. Yeah. Uh-huh. Aladdin and Jasmine. Yeah, it's always the same. It's always the same. Like, well, of course. It, it, you can forgive a man for thieving, but you can't forget a woman. A man can rise above his social status, but not a woman. Apparently. But it's science fiction fantasy. Use your imagination. No, it's just fantasy. There was no science. Yeah, there was no... S- <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if it counts as fantasy, too. I mean... I'm fantasy is a magic system. Magic bee pollen. Like, yeah, yes. But like, well, it's just it's explain? inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's true. It was, it was badly written fantasy. Yes. <laughs> badly <laughs> conceived. Oh, such a shame. All right. Any uh, star rating and final thoughts? After you. Marshallin? Maybe a one star for the visuals. And then that's it. That's it, yeah. You had pretty visuals. End. End. Eric? I'm going to give you a 1.5 for the music and visuals. If I muted this movie, I could add my own dialogue and my own storyline and actually enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one got a one star for me, and that was because it was visually stunning. Otherwise, I, I would have just turned it off and walked away. Yeah. It's... And it's not even just that I'm a black-hearted witch who doesn't like love stories. I'm sure that's part of it. No. But... No, you'd hate it more if you did like love stories. Oh, yeah. prob- because oh maybe. Because this is done poorly. Yeah, because it's done so poorly. I'm but. someone who likes love stories, and no, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Such a shame. So, a score of 1.1 something. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall, did you want to pick the next one? Sure. This Anyone want a DVD? Yeah. Anyone want a DVD? We'll give it away in <laughs> the competition. Ex Machina, 2015. Oh, Ex Machina. Ooh, a oh. science fiction, an actual science fiction movie, oh. starring a Weasley. Starring a Weasley. Red hair, handing me down robe, must be a Weasley. Okay. Apparently, so- all my references are Harry Potter for actors from Britain now. Oh, Doctor yeah. Potter. Doctor Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter or Doctor Who, one or the other. <laughs> Okay, so the next uh, movie we will be reviewing is Ex Machina 2015. If you have any thoughts about Upside Down, do leave them in the comments down below. We'd be glad to hear them. Defend this movie to us if you can. I want to find something positive other than the visuals for this film. Did you just turn it upside down? <laughs> Should have done it earlier. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. blah. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Bad movie. Bad movie.